All right, we got uh, another match here. Going to Aorta. Again, because I really like that map. Which I might have already said in another video. That's fine, I don't care. I do, I like this map. I think it's a great map. Because it's well balanced, it's got open areas, it's got closed areas, it's got plenty of room for weird stuff. Huge fan. <sighs> I'm ready. I'm ready. All right, we got team one, COSP, they're gonna be over here. Team two, gonna be the ANS over here. Uh, overall, the ranks in this match were pretty low, so I'm hoping for some good things. I find that in general, low ranked players tend to play really interesting games. Especially on maps they're unfamiliar with. They don't. They haven't been suckered into a, a meta or a single build that they just bring out all the time. They're constantly experimenting, constantly doing new stuff. Trying to learn, trying to grow. And I think that's got a lot of potential. Looks like the teams are coming in pretty spread out. It looks like mass-wise, I've got a pretty even balance of ships. No one's going super crazy with the spam, although that does assume that one of these lines isn't a fleet deploying in with 17 frigates on it. Yeah, oh, here we go. Plus five escorts here. That's what I was talking about. Plus one escort there. So we shall see. <laughs> Here's a shuttle being dropped into the match. Usually you don't look at shuttles on the drop-in. Yeah, I'm not sure what uh, it prioritizes when you're spectating. Because when you're just playing, it's your own ships. And it's usually your heaviest ship. But maybe it's your ship that's in first place. I don't know. All right, we got a Gunnacello broadside casemate line. A little, little bloodhound tug. Yeah. Roll off cargo container, a cargo uh, feeder, a monitor with small gun Acello plus an EWR, and nothing on the bottom mount. Well, the, I guess the EWR is on the bottom mount. Another scout. Is that a bellbird on top? It sure is. Nice. It's nice to see Protectorate forces bring E-War. I think in general, a lot of people don't bring electronic warfare on the Protectorate side of things. Which I don't understand because the bellbird is really strong. Maybe it's because the OSP already has... It's already sort of weird to play as, and people aren't entirely used to them yet. So they aren't comfortable enough with the extra micro that comes with the electronic warfare. Distinct possibility. Okay, nothing too crazy on this team. Let's take a look at the ANS team. All right, here's a pack of beamers. Very dangerous. With an E-War... Wow, a comprehensive E-War reigns. Uh, he's probably going to use the, uh, well, no, that's just a full range of German. Man, that's great. A lot of PD on these. And I see another pack. Small ships up here. Just, just some rains. Sprinter. Nothing too exciting yet. Axford. Very gunned up Axford. Oh, my goodness. No, that's that's pretty dangerous. Uh, it's gonna need to watch out for missiles. Two defenders and a rebound is not enough. Although I didn't, the protector team doesn't have that much in the way of missiles. So this gamble is gonna pay off. This thing is going to shrek people. 
unless it gets taken out by that one roll-off cargo feeder. Again, he's got two of them. This is, we need to keep an eye on this. This fleet right here is incredibly dangerous and very lucky that the uh, protector team isn't bringing, is it another pack of beam stones? No, nah, mass driver keystones, okay. With some light cannons and some auroras. All right, see, this is what I'm talking about. Like, that's, no sane person builds a ship like this. And that's that's the beauty of watching games with newer players in them. <laughs> that you get strange, strange builds, and I like it. Okay, scout's getting over here. Scout's getting in position. Pretty slow start in general. No, no missiles rocketing across the screen for either side. Because, as previously stated, uh, neither side really has that much in the way of missiles. They're both focused on uh, guns. Which is a. Which could be very interesting, especially on this map, which has so many tight quarters for combat. NS team is the first to take their point. That's going to be good. I'm not sure why the protector team... Why are these guys not moving towards Echo? That's a huge mistake. Well, I mean, it's not an error. It is a just a bad choice. You need the cap points. That's the name of the game. I understand you want to get the ambush off. But you got to cap those points. Uh, this Monitor Brigade, God, this is an amazing fleet. Monitors and frigates, or and, uh, shuttles. They're going to be able to, well, if they can take Delta up here and then move through this and get a weird angle on Alpha or maybe rotate over to Bravo, they could do a lot of work. That would be difficult to pull off, but if pulled off well, uh, has could be very powerful. It's casemates getting into cover up here. That's good for that ship. I like the rains. I don't really use them that much, but I like the way they look. Just a, just a big rectangle. <laughs> it's so simple, but so versatile platform. This is a part of the show where we would invite a guest speaker on to fill up some of this dead space, talk about their uh, book that they're trying to sell. Because, damn, this is a slow starting game. Only one point has been taken where I don't know how long exactly, probably five minutes into it, if I had to guess. And nothing's really going on. We got an expert team on Bravo, which could be very bad for this group. Because, well, they've got some plasmas, but with the sheer volume of guns on those Axfords, if the monitors engage the Axfords in close combat, uh, the protector team will absolutely get annihilated by that. There's so many combat weapons on this thing and I don't think that crew is bringing any rockets unless these yeah okay 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 but 
fired it close enough. Point defense isn't going to do that much to the rockets anyways. We'll see. Hopefully, I want to see those two fleets engage each other. I think that would be very intense, very brutal. The enemy secured zone box. Right, protector forces have grabbed a point. These guys are still just hanging, just having a blast. Uh, looks like this guy is just straight up AFK. <laughs> No, they, these moved here. I don't know why that's the point you want to set up at. <sighs> okay. Might be a really boring game. Uh, I'm hoping it'll be more interesting later. If this is, if this has been uploaded, uh, please stick around. That means it did eventually get interesting. And if it hasn't been uploaded, then uh, how the hell are you watching this? Please stay off of my computer and stop hacking me. But yeah, if this has been uploaded, that means it gets significantly more interesting later. It's just off to a slow, sleepy, nebulous speed start. Space is big and ships are fat. And there's nothing wrong with that. It's just hard to uh, commentate on since there's not anything happening. Holy crap, I... did I miss this? I think I completely missed this when browsing around the ships at the start. I'm glad it's going slow. Because a uh, whole lot of canted threes on a voxel is very dangerous. Let's see. Yeah, interface and a bus. Two interfaces. Two buses. Oh, this is going to hurt someone real bad. What do you have on here? Hybrids. 36 hybrids. 36 hybrid missiles with increased channels and programming speed. If this gets the right shot off, oh my goodness. Yeah, I have a feeling this match is going to get very interesting. Man, everyone's just taking up positions and no one wants to grab points. That's so weird. As these guys are refusing to grab Echo. And now this guy's maybe going to grab Alpha. He might just chill behind this rock. This team's moving out. Heading through that corridor I was talking about earlier. Oh, don't show your face up there, Voxel. You actually should be hiding. Get that missile payload off in a devastating and powerful volley. You can only do that if you've Manage to hide your position and what your payload is. Plasmas? Oh, he's been caught! Looks like one missile's being programmed. You're gonna need more than that to get through those. There's another one. You've got the channels. Program more. Oh dear. Was I... Am I on drugs? Yeah, I would have sworn to you that one of these increases the programming channels. Maybe he's just single firing them? I don't know, but I don't think this is going to be enough. It is! It is going to be enough! Oh my god! One missile almost completely destroying this monitor. That's another missile. H-E-K-P. O-P. 
FTW, very strong. There's another missile. This monitor fleet is getting absolutely annihilated by just a small handful of missiles. Three missiles came through. And we got the mass drivers from the Keystones helping, and it looks like we've got the heavy guns from the Axfords helping as well. And things have gone to zero, from zero to 60 real fucking fast. Oh boy. Sellos counterfiring the Axfords, but that is not going to be enough firepower to make these turn around. No, sir. These monitor, this little monitor group is getting out of there. They're still in formation, which means the healthy ships are going to be slower getting away since the damaged ships have degraded thruster power, which is a big problem. Whole fleet's going to be exposed to fire for longer. Looks like this ship has been completely abandoned. Which surprises me. It seems like it's got like a little tiny bit of functionality left. But yeah, it's probably best to uh, leave it behind. And not worry about it that much. These Axfords are hard burning in. Dumping the damage, heading towards Alpha. They want control of the middle of the map, and with those guns, they just might get it. That is so much firepower, and the Protector team doesn't really have much to punish the lack of point defense. The enemy secured zone Atlas. Well, they have a missile monitor around here somewhere. I think it might be you, yeah. How many missiles you got? 50 torpedoes. Oh my. That actually could obliterate those Axfords. The small volume of point defense they have on them is not enough to survive those torpedoes, but you have to get in range to fire that. A little bit of plasma coming onto the Axfords. And a little bit of plasma missing the Axfords. There is a clean hit. This Voxel is just waiting to pounce on someone. And I'm not sure why he's waiting. Those missile shots, I don't know if he's panicking and didn't notice, but those missiles absolutely annihilated the ships over there. I think he could give some support to these Axfords and hit this Ocello once. Well, they don't really need it, do they? Oh my goodness, the power output of just bringing guns, guns, and more guns is on another level firing the smaller weapons at the cargo feeder which I don't think is the play actually yeah these aren't doing that much damage these aren't really doing any damage <clears throat> what kind of rounds these experts have loaded a little bit of everything okay oh but the 120s are only HP HE I should say there is no AP 120 yeah, that's not going to be able to hit through the cargo monitor. The torpedoes are coming out! This is what I was talking about. Oh, that's mean. That's mean looking. That's going to ruin someone's day. The Sarissa! Oh my goodness. Sarissa Reigns saving the day. These are not even the same player. Someone has put this reins over here to help these Axfords. Uh, and I can actually just see who this belongs to. And that someone is Squee? 7 e Squeeze? Maybe? Absolutely phenomenal teamwork. That prevents this from being turned around. That could have been a disaster for the Shelter Alliance team. Because those Axfords are a lot of firepower. And this ship is the only thing that can punish them, and I think it's about to die. A few more torpedoes going out. 
Yeah, if you're going to fire, you need to fire that stuff now because you're taking a lot of damage, buddy. But it is, that is not enough. Those Sarissas are going to just pop those like balloons. Oh my goodness, Sarissas are pretty good. This Acello is, sorry, pretty much out of the fight. It's about to be even more out of the fight. This is overkill, but I don't care. I like missiles. Boom! <laughs> oh, HEKP, I love you. Absolutely phenomenal explosion. This cargo feeder is standing up pretty well. Looking like he's going to take cover behind the Ocello. But if he does that, he's going to be opening up to, oh, well, those. I was going to say the mass drivers, but the missile voxel pokes his nose out, clocks this ship in the face, and there are uh, no damage control teams here. So, yeah, that's out of the fight. It can camp points, but it cannot fire. Missile Voxel taking a little bit of a beating for its sins of daring to fire its missiles, but Certainly taking less than it gave. And it's firing its whole battery. Where are these headed? Oh my, that is gonna... Someone is dying. I think it's gone for this line ship. Oh yeah. Except it looks like he track fired them. And it's... Yeah, I think he track fired them. And they're gonna run into this wall over here. Which is real unfortunate for the missile player. What is that? Are those Sarissas? Is that what I was seeing? Yeah. Sarissas saving the day again. Well, the rock probably would have saved the day. But Sarissa's helping. Protector wielding them quite effectively. Just in general, the players have been doing very well after that slow start. Someone has surrendered. Who has surrendered? Ah, the guy with the Waracella and the uh, cargo feeder, both of which have been just beat to pieces. He's out of here. He doesn't care about the AAR. He doesn't want to stick around. He's ready for the next game. Axford's laying into these monitors very effectively, I might add. They're getting plasma washed. And they're, yeah, they're, they're definitely losing some armor for it. But the Axfords are overall winning that fight. You know, armor loss can be devastating, but uh, a little bit of armor loss ain't going to help you if you're dead. Man, look at the angling on those ships just deflecting round after round after round. Incredible. The enemy is securing zone eclipse. eclipse. Who's? Aha! The Beamstone team has finally taken Echo. The uh, surprise shuttles are moving in. Here they are. They're moving over the Beamstone team. They're moving away from the Beamstone team, and they're not angled to shoot their rockets. I don't. I don't understand what your objective is, Nekiru. Aha, uh -huh, I see. Maybe paying more attention to the lines than the uh, shuttles? I'm not sure. Maybe he's looping around the shuttles to back cap Charlie? Which is also a weird choice, considering he didn't take Eclipse in the first place. I don't know. These ships are also mean. They got a lot of missiles on them. Very dangerous. Oh, I see. Okay, so these aren't all the same ship. These are several different ships. I like that. Instead of building one ship and copying it out, each one of these has been handcrafted. Oh, there is too much action going on on the map for me to keep up with it all now. Most of it's centered around these Axfords, though. So I should probably keep an eye on these guys. They're taking fire from three different fleets right now. The Casemate, the uh, 
a solo team over here with also guns. Those cannons are going to be making very good use of the plasmid uh, starboard here on this Axford because both of these Axfords have been very, very plasmid. And it is, it, that's starting to add up. Monitors are a little beat up. Monitors are a lot beat up. Oh, man. Yeah, monitors are really beat up. But they did their job of damaging these axe of uh, debuffing the, the armor on these axefords. And if you don't roll to face the other side towards the enemy, those uh, high fire rate, low armor penetration rounds are going to... Eat these ships alive. Oh, the rocket ships are moving in and firing at the beam stones. They're having a uh, pretty limited effect, actually. I mean, a few lands are happening. But overall, it's mostly misses, and the ones that do hit didn't do much damage. This one took at least three, and is pretty much fine. Yeah, I mean... Might even be completely fine. I think the only damage is to some thrusters from running on flank. Okay, that's kind of weird. And he's firing back with torpedoes. Oh, that's dead. See you later. Or it's gonna... Okay. This is definitely overkill, those torpedoes are. <laughs> Two of them missed. Oh, no. Casemate's poking his head up again. Gonna get a phenomenal volley off. Oh, look at that. Look at it go. Look at it go. Come over here and get a shot of all those impacting. Oh, yeah, that's, uh, that's a lot of damage. It's probably using HE since some of these are punching through, which is gonna be even more damage. That Axford is uh, not not really in the fight anymore. This one still is, though, and no one's firing at it. Which could be very bad news. Protector of forces. Because as previously stated, these Axfords have a phenomenal volume of weapons on them. <laughs> no point defense, and they didn't get punished for not bringing point defense at all, which is... Amazing. You can absolutely... It's a gamble. It's a big gamble. But if it pays off, boy, howdy, does it pay off. Those things have been punching OSP ships up one side and down the other. This monitor team is not in the best of health, but it is still burning to cap points. I respect it. The Sarissa Defender. No, this isn't that. Yeah, it is. Sarissa Stonewall Blanket Blizzle. The Sarissa Reigns, I should say. That's what this is. It's coming over here to cap Alpha. Putting itself way out there. But its job. He probably doesn't know it for sure, but his job is mostly done. I mean, the E War is useful. But there's not much in the way of missiles left for the Protector of Forces. Mm -hmm. More fighting over here. The experts looks like the experts are switching to fight at the Ocello. That's not where the firepower is, Chief. The firepower is in the line ship. That's what you want to be worried about. It's also easier. Oh, there we go. It's also a lot easier to damage line ships than it is to damage Ocellos at that range. Speaking of having trouble damaging Ocellos, look at all of these mass drivers miss. No one has a good radar picture of this guy. And it shows. Looks like something's evacuating down here. This Ocello has had to evacuate. I'm not entirely sure what killed this. Uh, looks like gunfire by these, by the bullet holes. Uh, I don't know what happened to the uh, rocket ask. Uh, da, 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 Voxhole. He's over here. He's hanging out. He's biding his time. He's getting ready. 
to just ruin someone's day. That time might be now. That's a main drive burn. These Axfords, unfortunately, can't take on the entire Protectorate fleet at the same time by themselves. And the rest of the team's just kind of floating around. Living their best life, although if the Axfords can be enough of a distraction for these Beamstones to get into position, they could completely destroy the backside of the Protectorate fleet. Which would be absolutely devastating. Uh, if they get in close enough, they could also get a radar lock, which would mean all the long-range gunners would have access. Oh, they've been seen, though. Protectorate has seen the Beamstone fleet. And they're firing. They're firing a lot. That is that is really bad for you. And the number one secret of Beamstone is don't be seen until you're shooting. At least that's what I've been told by the experts. Already lost his front gun. Big problem. You're fine. You're fine. You're fine. Yeah, so just this guy got damaged right now. But if he stays in formation, he's going to be taking a lot of damage. Looks like the Beamstones are in range. They're not very accurate right now. But that is a lot of damage on that line ship. It'll be significantly more effective on the Acello. But I understand when you deal with the firepower first. If those casemate guns can be damaged enough that they can't really fire back, those Beamstones have pretty much a free in. Axfords have switched to the cargo monitors, cargo feeders. Over here, it looks like they're getting annihilated. Oh. Uh, okay. I'm not sure what happened there. I mean, obviously, a reactor explosion is what happened there. But I'm not sure if... A lucky shot from an Axford clipped a reactor and caused that explosion, or if one of the beam stones blasted it at just the right point. In either way, that's a huge win for the Shelter Alliance fleet, because uh, that's going to weaken the armor on this bad boy, which I guess was already pretty weak. Uh, but it's also going to significantly reduce the firepower of these ships back here. There goes another one. Drive explosions all over the place. It might have been missiles. So you might have fired another volley off earlier and I didn't see it. Missiles have a tendency to cause reactor explosions. This shark voxel is being very judicious in his applications of ordnance, which I really like. Looks like the line ship's trying to get a bead on these. I don't know about that one. This one's just about hose. Oh, those missiles are getting shot out of the sky by something. Is it you? Yeah. Still two Sarissas on this guy. So they'll come up here and just get boink right out of the sky. He's uh, pretty damaged, but still in the fight. Still helping his team. Mad respect. It's anyone's game at this point. I think the Alliance has a significant lead in firepower and in points. But if, well, I guess they're not doing that. I was about to say, if these monitors, this little fleet spreads out and tries to play the point game, they could absolutely win it. But they don't care about that weak sauce. They smell blood. They smell a beat-up Axford. And they're coming for it. Another missile volley. I don't think he realizes the missiles are getting plucked out of the sky by Sarissa's. And what that really means. Scout's getting fired at. Nothing doing there. This line ship is trying to survive. He's leaving the combat zone. But the mass driver keystones are not letting him go anywhere. Even the laser keystones can't get a good shot on this tug. 
Uh, the bellbird is, well, it's now downed. This thing has not enough power. That one hit into that power block, I think, just, just about killed this. Rails going into those, going at those. Beam stones, but no one has a good radar picture, so those full miss. This is a shit show game. It really is. It absolutely is. It's a complete shit show. Um, and it's great. I I think those are the more interesting games. I mean, big plays that win games immediately are pretty cool. But I like this, because you don't know. I still don't know who's going to win it. I'm like 80% sure it's going to the Shelter Alliance. But if you've watched any of my earlier videos, you've seen about how good my predictions are. <laughs> you might as well just flip a coin. Oh my goodness! This is the last functioning Axford, and it is about to be a non-functioning Axford. That is a lot of damage, especially into those sections of the ship that have been damaged by plasma. Oh, baby. A lot of fires, a lot of crits. Only one restore left and only six damage teams. That is not enough to save this ship. If we can get some more fire into those drives, could be another big reactor explosion. I like reactor explosions. I'm on whatever team is causing reactor explosions, which thus far has been both teams. Are those... Oh, oh, the Voxel's supporting. We've seen what these missiles can do to this little fleet that doesn't have enough PD to deal with a sprinter. Oh, but it misses. And this one's seeking a dead target. Unfortunate. Could have been a absolute... Uh, mess. Last time I played a mild, modded map. Okay, so we have 12 year olds on this team. Who are you? Ghostbringer. Ah, okay. So the guy who brought a terrible build, didn't know what he was doing, and uh, lost all his ships because he was just parked in the back somewhere. Got it. Cool. Yeah, this is the map's fault. Ooh, man. Shuttles are just really good at not getting hit by missiles, I guess, is the moral of the story here. Try firing at the monitors? Or, oh, my. Yeah, we'll see. Okay, so that's my special gift. I get to uh, say that something's really good, which causes an immediate, an instantaneous nerf in the game that I am observing. It's truly remarkable. Oh, shuttles are really good at dodging. Boom! Instantly gets hit by a missile. See you later. Um, yeah, so if you need me to uh, rig any games, just let me know. I'll uh, really talk up how well the enemy team is doing, and they'll instantly all explode. Yeah, so this guy is a 12-year-old and doesn't understand. That's unfortunate. Man, that was a good match. What are the points? Holy crap, the match is almost over. On the points section. My <laughs> ship, it's rude. No, he's, he's right, you know. Lasering dead ships is, is rather impolite. Um, Hopefully this won't be too toxic. I might be a bit of a jerk on my cast, but I try not to be a jerk in game. Because that's not nice. And I think that encourages poor community behavior, which is not good. Uh oh.
That was a good match. I'm glad it turned around. I was really worried the first, like, ten minutes of the game when it was just big ships floating around in space. Well, little ships, really, floating around in space that it was going to turn into just that. Um... <laughs> uh, do I have to play Alliance? It's really not more difficult. It's just not as straightforward. Like, if you don't have the sort of roundabout mentality, then I guess it is more difficult. But if you play like a weirdo, anyways, I think the OSP is easier. Yeah, here we go. I like OSP better based on what? He doesn't have any time spent in the game. How does he know what he likes? Uh, I don't know. Alright. This guy raged quite clearly. Pretty good showing from Makiro. Are you the... No, I want to see what that uh, missile cargo feeder did. This team, 716, Betty Needy. Oh, right, nothing. He just fired off a few. Cruise command guided. I don't know about that one, Chief. Yep. So, okay, so it was a lucky hit from something that can confirm by the player it was a lucky hit from something that took him out of the fight. That took the command cruiser out of the fight. Jeez! That hurts. That hurts so much. He could have done so much more if he had that. Look at this missile voxel. Oh, my. Yeah, and every single one of these that hit just took a ship out of the fight. Uh, it's beautiful. Good work on that. Knees. Goodness. Yeah, gunning your experts. He's uh, very powerful. It's extremely risky. If the Protectorate team had container ships or had like a dedicated roll-off launcher, this thing, both, th this, this guy just dies without doing anything at all. And we see a fundamentally different game and I laugh at how stupid it is to have a ship without point defense on it in this day and age but it worked for him it worked for him that's a that's a huge coin flip man this keystone fleet is this the beams no these are the mass drivers okay so these were just never in any danger which makes sense they're a million miles away from everyone here's the beam fleet yeah they got shot up quite a bit but they did work good damage all around. And I don't think there's a protector player other than Makiro that I was particularly impressed with. Yeah, the two monitor guys just got annihilated. From long range. By those Axfords, man. They're so strong. And that missile voxel. Uh, that's been the game. Thanks for sticking through that kind of slow kind of boring early part and uh, i'll see you when i see you